welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, I have just started it, so thank you for your patience. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what you can do with just a bandana, and I'm too lazy to go outside in zero to 10 degree weather to get an actual stick, so I have a pen right here. But I'm gonna to talk to you just a little bit about basic tourniquet stuff and what you might be able to do when you're out in the wilderness and stuff you will have all around you, stuff you can use to stop the bleed. And um, so we'll get right to it. First thing is if you're out in the wilderness, most of the things you're gonna encounter when you are doing whatever kind of outdoor adventure is gonna be super minor stuff. You might get little nicks and, or you know, nicks and cracks and cuts, uh, pretty basic, maybe blisters if you're doing a lot of hiking probably sunscreen will be your best friend because if you're at higher altitudes or something like that, your biggest enemy is going to be sunburn. So really, really basic things that you want to prevent. Another big one that you might encounter that will be a big, probably a big um, thing to kind of avoid will be dehydration. If you're in warmer temperatures, you definitely want to avoid uh, getting dehydrated, that's a really big problem. Making sure that uh, if you do get sick, that's your number one thing that you need to do as far as the defense goes. The other thing would be if you're in colder temperatures, obviously hypothermia is going to be your big um, enemy on that front. So I am going to talk a little bit about what I would consider what we call stop the bleed in healthcare, and it's just super basic. Um, there's a lot of different types of tourniquets out there. I don't have a cat's tourniquet. That is going to be something that we're going to kind of simulate with what I have, uh, what you probably will have if you're out in the outdoors. The other one would be, this is more like a pressure bandage. It's called an Israeli tourniquet and so it's kind of nifty and that it has um, underneath it a nice kind of pressure bandage in it. It has a little clip that goes through and then it comes back on itself when you wrap around it and it puts pressure so you want to make sure that that is directly over where you have the most bleeding at and then um, it'll wrap around and then kind of hook back into itself so no need to uh, worry about like how are you going to secure it? That's the nice thing about the Israeli bandage. And then, um, I probably can't find it now, it's a rat's tourniquet, and that's more like, kind of like a, almost a piece of rubber, or not necessarily rubber always, but like a, kind of a cloth spandexy thing that it's going to be a very tight tourniquet. I think the thing to think to remember about tourniquets is that you need to make it super tight and to the point where you're going to see a discoloration in the site that is uh, what we would call distal to where you put the tourniquet on. So say I had a bleed right here I would want to make sure my tourniquet is above that site and I want to make sure it's tight enough that I can no longer see uh, coloration in here. Also, you're going to be able to check for a pulse. Say it's on my arm, I'm going to check for a pulse here. I should not be able to feel a pulse. Uh, otherwise, if I can, then I need to redo my tourniquet and make it tighter. So that's a big thing to, to think about there. Um, Boy Scouts kind of has a great... Um, method because they always wear their neckerchiefs and there's so many different uses for just your bandana, your basic bandana uh, or for Boy Scouts or maybe even Girl Scouts, uh, your neckerchiefs, but your bandana, a lot of hikers do carry these around and because they're super lightweight, very useful for many, many different reasons. Uh, I know some hikers will use this as kind of their um, hygiene cloth. Let's call it a hygiene cloth uh, for when they go to the bathroom or wash up or whatever. That would probably not be one you would want to use on a wound if you have a second one. Um, if you have nothing else, use it um, because if you can get some help, they're going to be able to get you treated and um, hopefully get you some antibiotics anyways. So kind of with this, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you can kind of fold up your bandana so that 
it is a little bit smaller and so when you do go to wrap it around uh, you're going to want to wrap it around say I have the cut in still the same spot and it's going to be a little bit harder on me because I'm doing it myself but just making kind of a, a simple knot and making it as tight as I can here and this is where the windlass comes in and again hopefully I don't break my pin because it's not very thick and strong you want something that is um, probably maybe like this big in diameter just something super strong um, so that you can keep it going and you will insert the windlass in in here and you're going to want to just twist it and yeah you guys can see my skin is is popping out right there um, and the thing about this is the great thing about a bandana is then you can wrap that around back around once you've achieved your tightness that you want to achieve with it and you can tighten that back up and hold that windlass, windlass in place and that's a key is to make sure that you can hold the windlass in place so that it doesn't come undone it's still remaining super duper tight um, I know right now that I don't have this on as tight as I need to for an actual tourniquet setting just because um, my fingers aren't going numb yet and they should be going numb after like three to five seconds. I should feel it. I should have been like almost screaming in pain uh, when I went to put the tourniquet on myself. And the other thing too is checking for a pulse and uh, a little weak. I mean, it's still there, but it's pretty weak. And so anyways, um, that would be kind of your simplest method for doing a simulated cat's tourniquet when you're out in the wilderness so that you actually have the materials that you need right there your sticks as long as it's a very um, strong stick because it could potentially break and then just your bandana is going to work for that and it's going to be a little bit harder for you especially if you're going to do it on a leg or something and thinking you're always going to go up from it, the site. So if you have something on the mid torso, you're not going to be able to tourniquet that off. Uh, if you have something on your leg, always going up higher from that site of, of injury. If it's high up on the thigh, uh, you have a very strong femoral artery right in your groin area. If you can get a bandage that high up, and if this is hopefully long enough to fit around that, you can do that and create that tourniquet style. Um, I know that was uh, something that they talked about a few years ago. And in, as you know, in medicine, we're always kind of changing things and then going back to the way things were a little bit. And I will say that just speaking from um, different trainings that I've had, a lot of vascular surgeons will say, yeah, they can they can deal with the tourniquet setting. The other thing you might hear about is something called quick clot. And I do have a little bit of some uh, quick clot with me here, maybe. I found my rat's tourniquet here. Um, here. This one is actually just a bandage. It's a small bandage, actually. Um, some will come like as in gauze or a gauze roll, and then some will be like the granulated beads. Uh, the granulated beads, uh, if that's all you have, fine. If you can use the actual gauze, it's a little better for the person on the other end, the vascular surgeon on the other end, uh, to not have to clean out every single one of those beads. But again, if you have nothing else, fine. But if you can tourniquet something off, they can fix that. Um, they can work with that. Just, just know that um, your idea is to get that person out as soon as possible. The thing about the quick clot gauze versus like the the granules that you would just sprinkle into like an artery or an area that's bleeding super duper heavy, you can't get it to stop. The thing with the gauze is you will want to get it 
as close as possible to the bleeding site. So you're gonna wanna get down in there and if you need to, not necessarily shoving your hand down in there, but if you do have like a stick or something that you can poke that down into it and it's gotta have pressure on there for um, at least a couple seconds to start to gel and coagulate the blood flow down right at the site of the bleeding site. And then you, if you have a long package, again, this is really, really small piece of gauze, but if you have a long piece of, of gauze, rolled gauze, that has the quick clot in it, use that entire thing, shove it down in there. It's gonna have to be packed in, pack, 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 and then wrap it around. Um, if, if you have a, a rolled gauze, great. If you just have a bandana, fine. Whatever you need to use. Uh, maybe you don't even have a bandana. If you can rip off uh, part of your shirt and do use that, you can use a um, part of your clothing items to create some of that too. Uh, a lot of people in the military now they're um, making tourniquets like almost like the cat's tourniquet right in different parts of the body armor I've been told. I have not seen that myself um, but I think that's pretty cool that you can um, go ahead and just tourniquet off at a certain area when you're out on the battlefield and um, very very cool uh, thing to have. I um, but anyways, some of the different types of tourniquets and things you can do if you're just out in the wilderness with some stuff and you don't necessarily have a, a cat's tourniquet or an Israeli bandage or um, just like even a fancy tourniquet because this is probably going to be kind of like heavy to hang on to. So um, common stuff that you might carry around with you everywhere that you can use. So um, hopefully that video, this is a little bit helpful to you guys in figuring out if you need to take like cool, massive amounts of first aid stuff when you go out into the wilderness. Um, I will say if you are um, going out to hunt in your firearm hunting or whatever, um, you you may wanna carry some quick, quick clot with you just in case something happens. Uh, very, very random that that's probably gonna happen unless you're hunting with Dick Cheney. So hopefully that doesn't happen for you. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching and hopefully we'll get a little bit better about getting videos up on this channel.